Hi, I'm Dr. Ganesh Bhatt. We are here with uh, Dr. Lavanya Kiran, a senior consultant in uh, women as well as reproductive medicine and a senior robotic surgeon. Hi, ma'am. Hello. Uh, nowadays, we are hearing a lot of uh, problems related to uh, women health and a uh, lot of increase in number of hysterectomies and bleeding disorders. Can you enlighten us regarding that, please, ma'am? Sure. Uh, yes, like you mentioned, these days there are a lot of women coming with several complaints of bleeding issues and there can be pain abdomen, there can be ovarian cysts, a lot of issues are, uh, women are coming with these symptoms. So what happens whenever a woman comes with these symptoms, we do not jump directly for surgeons, we try to evaluate them, see where do they fit in, do they fit in for a medical management or do we have to put them in for surgical methods depending on lot of various associated factors either they cannot go through a medical management or they've already finished the medical management and they cannot be continuing or it's not helping them at all then we say go in for a surgical management coming to medical management we always do a primary evaluation for these people and see where is the lesion what is making them bleed so much and you know women will come to an OPD only when they are on the extreme of their uh, symptoms of either a severe pain, excessive bleeding. They would have tolerated and sat behind for a very long duration of time. So it becomes mandatory evaluation for their blood test as well to see how stable they are. And uh, since they don't report on time, we have to evaluate the basic needs and we also have to do a basic uh, test like pap smear where it also we call this as an opportunistic screening where we do the pap smears to rule out cervical cancers so once we evaluate them and see there isn't much of a problem it is just a hormonal related issue or sometimes we do diagnose them to have a fibroid uterus or we see to it that they do have a ovarian cyst or you know, most of the times we do not see any pathology involved at all then we call this as abnormal uterine bleeding so once we categorize where do they fall, is it some dysfunctional uterine bleeding or an abnormal uterine bleeding, then we will alter the treatment accordingly. Like if they do not have any symptoms, uh, what do we have to do with them? If they have symptoms and what kind of symptoms do they have, we choose medical or the surgical methods. We try to put them on medical methods where we have tablets, injectables and we also have an LNG IUCD that's a medicated copper tea and we can be using these for some considerable duration of time provided they are healthy enough, there are no cardiac issues involved or there are no other neurological problems associated. If they fit into the medical category, we use it for the medical category. But if they have already gone through a lot of medical treatment or considering their age, they cannot be put on hormonal treatment at all, then we say uh, they have to go for a surgical modality. Sometimes what happens, their lesion is so big, if the fibroid is more than 5-6 centimeters, they are bleeding excessively, no medical management is going to help them or an ovarian cyst which is very big and they have severe pain and they cannot be uh, going through a medical management for some time, we say go for a surgery. And whenever a woman says, uh, we say, you have to go for a surgery, we give them options because here we always believe in having a conversation and patient being a part of our treatment protocol and she has the equal right to decide what is good for her. So we give them the choice of open method where we call it as a laparotomy or minimal invasive. We do have laparoscopies and we have the latest of the technology that is the robotic surgery. So they could be choosing according to their convenience. Yes. Uh, nowadays we are hearing a lot about uh, robotic hysterectomy, robotic assisted uh, laparoscopic hysterectomy and uh, tubal recanalization, lot of things. Uh, could you enlighten us uh, regarding what is the major difference between laparoscopic surgical procedures or per se open versus robotic procedures? Definitely. What happens whenever we talk about open surgeries, we do a bigger incision sometimes depending on the lesion size. We do a vertical incision where we'll have to go almost at the umbilical or a little below or a little above the umbilical level up to the pubic region or we make transverse incision from uh, between the two iliac bones and roughly around 10 to 12 centimeters. Coming to the science and the progress in its technology and we at Narayana have always believed in adopting new proven and safe technology for our patients, we have minimal invasive surgeries here. Here coming to the minimal invasive surgery, we do have laparoscopes where we do it in pinhole and 
name it and all surgeries can be done. So I'm sure your next question is going to be why if you can be doing all surgeries with laparoscopy, why do we have robotic surgery? Obviously. Yes. And uh, this is why I'm here to tell you how robotic has a edge over the laparoscopic surgeries because while we're doing a robotic surgery, there is a 3D technology which is involved. So whenever we're seeing and that is also a minimal invasive surgery where when we are operating, we see everything in the 3D technology, unlike the laparoscope. Of course, the high technology, even in the laparoscope, 3Ds are available. But robotic is definitely better because we have a depth perception of 10 times much bigger magnification and the depth perception is always better. Compared to the recovery of the patient, compared to a laparoscopy and robotic is way better. And uh, healing process is better, everything at a minimal invasive process. So compared to an open method and a robotic, there's a huge difference from the pain, number of blood transfusions that they go through, recovery, getting back home, the number of stays in the hospital. Everything is least in robotic surgery compared to open or the laparoscopy methods. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, coming to the centers where it is available, how about to go ahead with the robotic procedure? Can you tell us, is it available in every center? No, definitely not. Robotic surgery is nothing but where we are using robots to help us operate, where we are the operating surgeons because of the preciseness of the technology and the machines, where we combine our skills with this machine-based learning, which is an AI technology. And the preciseness increases through our knowledge, where the whole machine is under our control. So everything gets replicated through the machine in the moments. So what happens, like I mentioned, this is a, definitely a superior technology where the AI is used and the human brain working and using the best of the abilities of the AI. And that is how the recovery and the medical advances are more. Coming to the number of centers, not all centers do have robotic surgeries and Narana is always targeted at high, having a high and the best technologies in order to give a better health care to their patients seeking them. So here we are offering a robotic surgery for different uh, kind of surgeries. It can be even for our gynec patients where they come with fibroids, excessive bleeding, it could be ovarian cyst. We also use it for endometriosis, which is one of the important factors for fertility or their pain. And then we do have patients seeking uh, tubal recanalization. Though we do IVF, like I mentioned, we always like the patients to be involved with us in the decision making. Sometimes they do not want to be going through an IVF because of the tubal factors. And they say, no, I want to do a tubal recanalization. Like I mentioned, it is almost 10 times more magnification. The depth perception is better. The 3D vision, tubal recanalization is better done on robotic surgeries, uh, robot, uh, using the robots. And so we can use this technology in different methods. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, as you say, necessity is mother of invention and uh, robotic surgery, uh, new entry into the field of medicine. Uh, can you enlighten us and the general public regarding what procedures uh, they can go ahead and how the patient selection usually goes? Like I mentioned, anybody could be a candidate for robotic surgeries depending on their symptoms. But doesn't mean this ovarian is very small that they will be put through a robotic surgeries. Considerably, if we think they have the advantage of doing robotic surgeries, especially for very obese patients where they are more than 135, 150 kgs, we always as a surgeon fear of the morbidities that is associated with an obese patient. And uh, we get patients from different places where they have been refused for a surgery for several reasons because of their excessive weight. They also come to us saying that they have gone through two or three surgeries in before and the surgeons say, no, 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 the chances of you having a lot of complications is going to be more if I operate. So here I would give a weightage to the robotic surgeries in very obese, morbidly obese uh, patients. Patients who have gone through several other procedures before different surgeries like two or three caesareans, laparotomies, all these patients who have gone through different surgeries before or even the younger uh, small children can also be using the technology of robots when need arises because the preciseness of the instruments are more. And endometriosis, like I mentioned, when we have grade 3, grade 4 endometriosis, it's very uh, tactic or uh, skill-based surgeries that needs to be done in such uh, kind of patients. And we can do it with great confidence for such patients while using a robot. We have talked about robotic surgery and its vast advantages. 
can you enlighten us about little disadvantage if at all it has disadvantage is not much but then except for the little bit of cost but then here we always try to charge on the minimal side only for the consumables which will be a little higher than uh, laparoscopic surgeries but then we have to see the advantages which is more associated than the financial thing because like when we do a myomectomy that is removal of the fibroid in a lap through a laparoscopy we always do something called as a double consent that means while we are doing a laparoscopy in order to remove the fibroids we tell them look there is a chances of we opening you uh, again because of the excessive bleeding which may not be controlled through a laparoscopy but then the robot gives a very great edge because the bleeding chances are going to be less their chance of getting converted to a laparotomy or open surgery is going to be very less the number of blood transfusion that a myomectomy patient is going to be going through is going to be less on a long term i would say there is no cost difference because the infection levels are low the number of stays in the hospital is less there is speed faster recovery for them the ambulation happens much quicker they get back home to their own family because no patient wants to stay in the hospital and i don't think anybody other than doctors and sisters like coming and staying for longer in the hospital so they get back to their family much quickly so these are the advantages of robotic on a long run i would say robot has got more of advantage rather than any uh, disadvantages okay thank you as we know you are a very senior robotic surgeon uh, a famous one though and uh, can you uh tell us your experience and the message for the uh, uh i don't know of how senior or uh, how junior i am but then being in this field for quite some time and being operating so many cases i would only say technology is available technology is available at our fingertips it is just that how accessible are we to use these facilities which are available at our doorstep it is just that knowing that technology is available we need to approach and we don't use the vice versa technology it is basically the nail and the hammer theory which works well here and not the reverse and so depending on what is the right patient who is the right patient we use such technology only for the right patient thank you very much thank you